now. Okay, without further ado, let us introduce our presenter. So our presenter has a five years experience in the field of quality, health, safety and environment. She is currently working as a senior HSES tech in one of our prestigious company here in UAE. She is a safety advocate and our one and only FILSA secretary. Siya lang naman po ang parati nating naririnig every training natin as a moderator. At ngayon sa wakas, maririnig na natin siya na magtuturo. So please help me welcome Ms. Jura Rusarda. Hi, Sec. Good afternoon po. Hello po, good afternoon. Ay, the floor is yours na po, sec. <laughs> Wait na. Parang may kulang sa introduction po, Ma'am Sheila. <laughs> Hindi mo pinanggit na meron na siyang ni Bosch Diploma, ni Bosch IGC, tsaka isa sa rin siyang electrical engineer nagtapos sa Dubai. <laughs> Ay, yes. Po, humble salamat po kasi yan. Ha, humble po yan, humble. Habol, maraming salamat po sa pahabol, Press. <laughs> Uh, hindi ko na hindi ko na po siya ano hindi ko na siya inelaborate kasi um as mentioned po kanina no kung nata- sa mga kanina pa nandito and I'll reiterate it again for everyone na this will be my first time teaching as you can see from my experience I am working in the field of uh, QHSC for five years pa lang so Uh, I I want to take this opportunity to invite those aspiring um, safety practitioners as well as yung mga current practitioners natin here in the UAE as well as the Pilipinas to use PILSA as an avenue para matuto tayo magturo no wala na ano naman eh um even though we're providing training for free um we want to be able to Um, benefit both those learners. Hindi naman pwedeng lagi yung learners lang yung uh, nagbe-benefit through the trainings, di ba? As well as yung mga nagtuturo. No? Maka-benefit rin sila. Siyempre, kung experience na sila, uh, it's an- 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 lang, another challenge. But, siyempre, for people like me na first time lang magturo, um, this will be um, a stepping stone kung paano ba, una, paano magtuturo, and second is paano ma-improve. So, I'm inviting everyone, those watching in, here in Zoom at saka sa Facebook to, kung di pa kayo member pa-member na kayo. And kung member na kayo, or gusto nyo munang sanayin yung sarili nyo magturo, use FILSA. Open na open po ang FILSA. So, yun po. So, okay. Um, baka may gusto pa pa kayo sabihin, Tres. <laughs> Wala na po. Uh, natutuwa lang po kami. At, uh, dahil sa pagmamahal mo no, sa organization, sa advocacy, eh, nag-volunteer ka po. No? At, uh, mm. welcome na, at natutuwa rin kami na napaka-humble mo. No? Hindi mo pa inano yung mga qualification mo lahat. No? <laughs> Ako pa nagsabi. Uh, <laughs> thank you po. Uh, uh, so, um, ano naman, ang qualification naman is just a paper not until you practice it. So, we need to remind ourselves of that, especially for those freshers tulad ko na, I'm, I mean, I'm just in, what, five years of my career. So, uh, let us exercise our opportunity to enhance what we have learned. No? Madali lang kumuha ng qualification. Ang mahirap is yung i-practice and i-maintain yun. And pag-uusapan na natin yan dito sa PPE, yung importance rin ng maintenance. Okay. <clears throat> so, for our training session for today, uh, we'll discuss only the basic um, aspects of the PPE. Kasi considering din yung iba natin participants, baka first time lang na umaten ng uh, first time na umaten ng isang agency related training or dun sa mga um, gustong uh, mag-start maging involved or nas entry level pa lang. No? So we will discuss about um, what is PPE, bakit siya importante, ano ba yung mga legal basis bakit kailangan tayo gumamit ng PPE, tsaka yung common types ng PPE, yung ginagamit natin, and proper donning and doffing, and how do we select a suitable PPE, and how do we maintain that. Okay. So, lahat po ng questions 
uh, will entertain it after the presentation. Hindi naman to masyadong uh, matagal. So, and I know everyone will have a lot of questions. So, we'll do that at the end of the presentation. Okay? Kung masyado po ako mabilis, please uh, feel free lang to type in the chat box. Nakikita ko naman po. And you can... Um, Open your mic naman kung masyado mabilis. But questions will entertain at the end. So let us go with the introduction to PPE. Okay. So useful ba ang PPE? No? Uh, let's take this one case study posted by ILO. No? There was a commercial, commercial gardener using a petrol-driven streamer. Ito yung pangkat ng mga damo to trim undergrowth. He hit a piece of unseen debris which was thrown into the air and caught him in the eye. This led to losing sight on that eye. No. So, ano yung nakikita natin dito? No. Uh, nawalan siya ng sight dun sa isa niyang mata, hindi na siya makakita. And according sa study, eh, dahil hindi raw siya nagsuot na protective goggles, which was advised in the manufacturer's manual para sa paggamit ng streamer na yun. So, two things na dapat nating isipin sa senaryo na to. Una, eh, hindi aware si kuya doon sa hazards na present habang ginagawa niya yung activity na yun. And pangalawa, Hindi niya alam na kailangan niya palang kumamit ng PPE. Hindi niya alam anong PPE yung gagamitin niya. But PPE is just a simple thing kung iisipin niyo. Mag, so para lang yung damit na susuotin. Pero kung hindi mo alam kung ano yung gagamitin mo, hindi mo alam yung ginagawa mo, ano yung pwedeng ikapahamak mo, it can lead to something worse. Na tulad nito, hindi na siya makakita. Diba? Same thing din dito. No? Naglalakad ka lang... I mean, you decide uh, dahil requirements ut ka ng PPE, naglalakad ng biglang may tumama sa ulo mo. No? Kung hindi ka nakasuot ng hard hat, dahil feel mo lang cool siya tingnan, it could have cost you your life. That's head, nandyan yung utak natin. No? So that's why it's very important na sumunod tayo sa ating procedure, sa instruction, kung requirement ng site, dahil in a split of one second, pwede bawiin yung buhay sa atin. So what is PPE? So PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. This is designed to protect the wearer's body from injury or infection. Bakit injury or infection? Kasi hindi lang sa injury type pinoprotektahan. Pwede rin sa mga biological hazards which can cause us diseases. No? Such a main example would be um, the coronavirus that can protect us from COVID-19. This is used to reduce exposure to hazards when engineering controls and administrative controls are not feasible or effective. Uh, I could not emphasize this more than when these uh, no, controls are not feasible or effective. No? So, ibig sabihin, um, ginagamit natin to kapag ka, uh, hindi, hindi pa rin sufficient yung controls para imitigate yung risk associated to that hazards. Okay? That's why it's important na alam natin kung kailan ba, uh, kung ano yung level of protection na, na binibigay ng PPE sa atin. So, PPE is needed when there are hazards present. And this is known as the last line of defense against the hazards. So back in the early days, ang PPE, ginagamit na rin naman yan. Una-una natin nakikita is sa mga sundalo. They're wearing this body armor, boots, gloves, and gawa pa to sa metal. Bakit? Kasi nga, um, it can, ano, hindi siya napipenetrate agad. Although the trade-off, masyado siyang mabigat. Even back in the 16th century, nung nagkaroon ng plague, yung mga doctors, nagsuot sila ng PPE rin. Gumawa sila ng kanilang um, version ng PPE. So, nakikita natin to ngayon kasi ikinukumpara yung COVID-19 pandemic dito sa plague. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng idea about the importance of PPE just through this COVID-19. At kahit yung scientific PPE, na generally believed to have begun with the cloth face mask. 
ito raw yung pinagbasihan ng ating N95 na ginagamit natin ngayon as a protection against coronavirus. So even before it's just a cloth face mask, no. So but now, syempre nag nag ano rin nag evolve din yung mga virus, bacteria. It's not enough anymore na cloth lang ginagamit although tayo ginagamit pa rin natin siya. Um, yung naka-on yung mic, may I request to please mute it po muna para hindi tayo maka disturb. Thank you. Okay. So why is PPE important? Ano ba yung pinaka main purpose ng PPE? It's basically to protect the wearer. Kaya nga tinawag siyang personal protective equipment. From the term personal, ang pinoprotekta niya is yung tao mismo, yung individual. No? And kinagamit lang natin to kapag ka hindi na gumana yung uh, engineering controls or administrative controls, sometimes ginagamit pa rin natin kahit merong um, engineering controls, administrative controls na in place na. So that, ano, mas mamitigate pa natin yung risk associated with that hazards. So it can cause injuries or infection sa lungs. Kahit na sample, gumagawa tayo ng gas testing. No? At gas testing is one of the controls. Pagka pupunta ka, enter ka ng confined space. Pero hindi ka naman pwede mag-gas testing ng puta ka lang doon. Siyempre, baka masinghot mo rin yung um, toxic gas. So, nagsusot pa rin tayo ng PPE habang ginagawa natin yung control na yun. Kaya, sometimes PPE is a control within a control. No? Uh, it also um, protects us from falling objects, from sharp edges, which can puncture our hands and feet, um, from flying particles going into our eyes, and protecting our skin from contacting any harmful substances. But before we go to PPE, we need to always ask ourselves, what can I do to make it safe before I use PPE? Bakit? Kasi according nga sa ating hierarchy of controls, PPE is the last line of defense. Now, we have elimination, which is basically to eliminate the hazard. Substitution by substituting something to a less hazardous. Then we also have engineering control and administrative controls. And lastly, personal protective equipment. No? Nung sa iba nating mga workers, they always think na PPE will be the first thing to use. Kasi yun yung nakikita nila, yun yung nasusuot naman nila agad. But syempre, whenever we do something, whenever we want to control or we need to implement control measures, we need to assess paano natin, paano tayo makakapag-implement ng control without depending on the person itself. Because once we depend to the human, there's a tendency na uh, maging subjective siya. Hindi na siya suotin, hindi sundin, and those things. So is PP important? According to the study conducted by um, HSE back in 1996, this is the year na pinang ako. I know it's an old data, but I think it's very useful. Na ang PP related accidents can be ano no? May kita nyo dito yung um, correlation between yung failure type ng PPE according dun sa possible um, accidents or rather accidents na nangyari due to either not wearing the PPE or using unsuitable PPE. Okay? And even according to the industry sector, uh, which you can see, uh, most of the incidents happened back in 1996 to 2002, 2003, was in services and manufacturing. Those were the days na profit-driven kasi yung mga gantong sectors and uh, we're pushed to, ano, we're pushed, hindi naman push, but rather influence to take shortcuts para lang matapos yung ating ginagawa. Which is obviously, nowadays, um, it's more strict. Hindi na ganong kaluwag and everyone is really um, understanding ano yung importance ng pagsuot or pag-follow ng, proce ng procedures and pagsuot ng PPE. 
So also they did study about what are the costs related to the uh, PPE related accidents, no? Imagine nyo, back in 2001, this is just for one year, na around uh, 252 million uh, pound, euro, pound, sorry, pounds, ang nawala dahil lang nagkaroon ng PPE related accidents. Again, emphasizing, this is Uh, the, by PPE-related accidents, it's more on not wearing the PPE, using unsuitable PPE, or failure of PPE, baka sira na siya. No? And the highest contributing ano, incidents related to the PPE is sa paa palagi. No? That's why it's important to invest on the quality products such as PPE. So what are the legal basis of PPE? So let's start first on the top. No? Ano ba yung pinaka, uh, sinusunod in terms of international standards? So we have uh, a requirement from International Labor Organization stipulated in Occupational Safety and Health Convention 1981, Part 4, Article 16, where it states employers shall be required where necessary adequate protective clothing and protective equipment. So, ultimo ILO, nire-require yung mga ratifying countries nila na magsuot ng adequate protective clothing and equipment. So, as far is reasonably practicable, which basically yung alarm going back sa hierarchy of controls. Even sa atin, we have a uh, Republic Act number 11058, no? which states that employers, contractors, subcontractor, if any, shall provide his workers free of charge protective equipment no? where necessary again. Even in DO198, it states in Section 8, workers right to personal protective equipment no? where every employer, contractor, subcon shall provide his or her workers free of charge PPE. No? So all PPE must be appropriate size, weight, and type. So hindi lang basta PPE, kailangan akma dun sa ginagawa ninyo sa tao na gagawa ng trabaho at dun sa environment kung saan gagawin yung trabaho. Failure to provide appropriate PPE in high-risk activities shall give rise to the right of the worker to refuse unsafe work. No? Kung di kayo nabigyan, eh, if you feel it's unsafe, you can decline Nakastipulate naman yun sa batas. Karapatan mo yun as a worker to decline. Ay ma'am, uh, malapag yes, ko lang. Sige In po. addition, no, ang kahalaga rin ng, ng section uh, 8 na yan, sinasagot niya ito yung confusion dahil uh, sa mga hindi pa pamilyar sa batas, laging may tanong, no? Uh, sino ba magpo-provide ng PPE? Uh, yung iba naman, may mga company na hindi rin sila pamilyar. Uh, binabawas sila sa sweldo ng tao at uh, yung tao nagbabayad, gano'n. So, ito yung kahalagan kaya nilagay itong section 8 na to as part ng close ng provision ng ano, ng DO-198. Apo. Yes, yun lang po, po. dagdag ko lang po. Thank you po, sir. So, yun yung important. So, tayo mga workers, no, harapatan yung malaman to and you, you have to inform or sabihin doon sa employer nyo, nakarapatan nyo to na makakuha kayo ng PPE. Okay? Another legal basis is here in UEE, we have Federal Law Number no. 8, where it states that we must provide, employer must provide adequate means of protection okay? for employee from hazards, injuries, and vocational diseases. Meron din ang HSE, Health and Safety Executive, na dinevelop, which is Personal Protective Equipment at Work Regulation, or PPER, Regulation Number 4, which states employer shall ensure a suitable personal protective equipment. So, meron din sa OSHA, which is CFR 1910.132 related sa PPE, or Protective equipment shall be provided, used, 
and maintain in a sanitary and reliable condition. So kung mapapansin nyo, sa lahat ng batas na nakita natin, isa lang yung paulit-ulit na sinasabi, um, ang PPE dapat ibigay siya sa worker free of charge and it should be adequate okay, or suitable and it should be maintained. So let us go to the common types of PPE. Ano ba, ano ba yung iba't ibang types ng PPE na nakikita natin? Okay. We have eye and face protection, which basically protects the eyes and face of the worker. We have the head protection, which protects our head from um, impacts from objects from the top or the side, and as well as from heat. Okay, kaya may gap dun sa helmet natin. Well, uh, also, ear protection, which protects our ears from excessive noise. Respiratory protection to protect exposure to harmful gases, inhalation of um, particles which can cause diseases and other hazards such as biological or chemical. Meron rin tayong hand protection to protect our hands from contacting uh, chemicals, harmful liquids, and punctures or impacts from um, sharp edges or objects. Meron din tayong food protection, such as the same as hand to protect exposure to uh, harmful substances, impacts, or punctures from sharp objects or heavy objects. Lastly, meron tayong skin or body protection, which protects our entire body you know, from contacting chemicals, biological hazards, other harmful substances. So let us go to eye and face protection. So, direct to the point naman, eye and face protection is used to protect eyes and face from flying particles such as metal chips, kung nag-aano kayo, nagmamachining kayo, nagkakat kayo, from dust such as sand, chemical and thermal burns, intense light such as radiation or laser, biohazards, and blunt force and trauma. So may iba't iba tayong iron face protection which will ano the use of that will be dependent doon sa activity ng gagawin niyo. So let us first discuss about safety glasses. Ito yung pinaka common na nakikita natin sa site dahil ito yung um, readily available and it is used to protect workers against moderate impacts from particles such as flying particles or blunt force or trauma kahit yung mga large objects na tumatalsik it can also protect you from that it also have safety frames constructed of metal or plastic and impact resistant lenses and must meet minimum requirement as per local regulation or standard. So, hindi lang tayo basta pwedeng kumuha na si Tiglas. Siyempre, we need to assess ano ba yung pangailangan ng activity as well as kung ano ba yung hinihingi ng batas. So, it goes hand in hand. No? Maa naman kasi gumagamit, ang trabaho nyo is involving chemicals, more on liquids, walang dealing naman sa mga solid objects. Baka iba yung hakilangan ninyo, hindi safety glasses. Kasi it can pen liquid can penetrate here. No. Sometimes yung mga workers natin, mahina yung paningin. So they're using prescription glasses. So safety glasses can either be corrected, yung talagang gawa na according sa uh, vision nila, or you can wear your prescription glasses along with the um, safety glasses as you can see from this uh, picture no so it's out niya yung ano niya yung prescription glass niya yung eye glass then merong um, safety glass doon na nakoko nagko-cover sa kanyang salamin okay um paki-mute na lang po yung mic okay So as you can see here, bakit importante na chine-check or bakit importante na graded yung mga glasses natin talagang certified. Kasi dito pala, tinetest kasi yan eh. Ang according dito, kailangan yung safety glasses impact resistant. Hindi naman siya pang forma lang na plastic lang, suot ka, puta ka ng site. Siyempre may use siya. Mukha lang siyang simple na glass. 
but kailangan um pagka tatamaan yung mata mo mapoprotektahan as you can see dito sa ano sa lower uh, picture yung nail na lumipad tumalsik siya di ba so, ibig sabihin impact resistant napoprotektahan ng safety glass yung mata mo otherwise kung normal glass lang yan baka tumusok na yung nail sa mata mo nabulag ka na di ba so there's always a reason hindi siya yung um basta clear glass okay na yan hindi ganun So, safety goggles or tight-fitting eye protection that completely covers the eyes. So, ito at saka yung buong area dito sa mata. Saan pinaprotektahan? Sa dust, sa splashes, biohazards, and vapors. No? May iba't iba tayong um, safety goggles. Meron tayong direct ventilated. O saan um, ang pin um, pinaprotektahan kayo nito against large particles. Uh, kung mapapansin nyo, may buta siya dito sa gilid. No? Lahat to. Ibig sabihin, um, on habang ginagamit nyo to, um, nabibentilate itong buong part na to para hindi siya mag-fog, hindi ma-impaired yung vision nyo. Unlike here, in indirect ventilated, Um, it protects you against liquid or chemical splashes. So, kung nagdi-deal sa mga laboratory, since most of the time, nagdi-deal sila sa mga chemicals, liquid chemicals, liquid substances, ito yung lagi nilang ginagamit. Kasi, um, tightly sealed siya dito sa parting ito. And meron siyang butas dito sa gilid. O saan, um, pwede mo siyang sikipan, okay, parang magva-vacuum siya at hindi siya magfa-fog for a certain period. Let's say one, two hours, depends. And then, pwede mo na lang siyang i-release para uh, makahinga uli yung um, safety goggles. So, this is, uh, it can protect you more rather than the direct ventilated. And then, the non-ventilated, it's the normal. Kulog lang siya. Uh, sarado lang siya. It does not allow passage of air into the goggles and prevents splash entry. The downside is it may fog inside and it may require you to clean the lens frequently. Ngayon, kung nag-handle kayo ng chemicals at merong kayong gloves na suot at may atmaya mo siyang lulinisin, it's not practical. Nilagay mo lang din yung sarili mo sa danger. Pero kung saglit nila naman siya gagamitin, then you can use it. Okay. Then we have laser safety goggles or glasses, which the main purpose is to protect the eye against intense concentration of light, such as lasers. No. So type of laser safety glasses an employer chooses will depend upon the equipment. So may iba't ibang grade ng laser, gog uh, laser safety goggles. And sa OSHA, uh, meron silang nilagay na um, table kung saan inakastipulate kung Anong level ng attenuation yung kakailangan, kakailanganin mo depende dun sa intensity ng laser. So accordingly, kung sa, sa activity nyo, sobrang taas ng intensity ng laser, then you select the highest one. Okay. And bawat bansa, may kanya-kanya silang requirement. But you need to follow the manufacturer's manual, no? the data sheets, kung ano yung kinakailangan ng activity na yun. And it will depend on your risk assessment. Then we have the face shields. Face shields are transparent sheets of plastic no? extended from eyebrow here hanggang dito sa chin natin and now cover yung buong muha natin. No? So its main purpose is to protect us from splashes or sprays of hazardous liquid. No? Kaya back in the COVID, ano, back in, ano, 2019, talaga nagkaroon ng increase uh, demand in the face shields kasi it protects us from aerosols which may have coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. No. But in industrial activity, we need to remember na hindi ito mapoprotektahan tayo from any impact hazards. That is the reason why yung iba ginagamit itong um, face shield along with the uh, safety glasses. Kasi safety glasses, nor, and then impact resistant. So at least on that level, mapoprotektahan yung mata mo in case na something will happen. And syempre, sa ibang RPE, ginagamit din yan. 
no, along with it. So for us in pandemic, we're using ano, face mask along with the face shield, diba? Then welding face shield, which is normally nakikita natin to and it protects eyes from burns caused by infrared or in Intense radiant light, flying sparks, metal splatter, and slag chips produced during the welding, bracing, soldering, or gas cutting. No, so this is made of vulcanized fiber or fiberglass. Sorry, and fitted with filtered lens or welding shields. No, so this face shield is specifically designed for the activity of welding. Uh, and may iba't ibang uh, if you'll see here yung eye protection niya may iba't ibang layer siya may iba't ibang shade rin yan okay and ang face shield may kanya-kanya rin silang grade and shade na kailanganin mo according sa welding activity na gagawin mo so ang OSHA at ang ANSI nagawa sila ng kanilang um, standard na ko ano yung minimum protection shade na kailanganin mo for that specific welding activity. Let's say for snow, kapag ka ang air current na gagamitin mo is this much, 250 to 550, ganito, kata, ganito yung minimum protection shade na kailanganin mo. Okay. So it will depend on your activity. But as a rule of thumb, you start with a shade that is too dark. So, start ka doon sa may um, pinahamadilim, then you just go up Ko ano yung sufficient na sa'yo. So, as long as hindi siya lalagpas doon sa minimum protection. Baka kasi, uh, kaya ang hinihingi is uh, minimum protection shade is 7. Pero, masyado na rin naman siya maliwanag sa'yo or madilim. So, uh, masyado siya maliwanag sa'yo. So, you can go lower than that. Ko ano yung applicable para sa'yo. Okay. As long as hindi uh, hihigit doon sa minimum requirement. Okay. But again, these values apply where the actual art is clearly seen. No. Kapag ka hindi naman siya ano, nakikita, hidden siya by the workpiece, then you can use lighter filters. Again, we need to consider alarm as low as reasonably practicable. No? Baka naman uh, nag-apply ka na ng ibang control measures and it may impair the vision of, that, of the person working. So when we select eye and face, prote uh, face protection, you must always consider no? yung ability to protect the worker against workplace hazard. Kung gagamit, kung magtatra ang activity mo is involving solids and gagamit ka ng, uh, let's say, face shield, no? Okay, it can protect you, but it cannot protect, ano, it can protect you only to a limited, ano, level. Pagka something sharp na yung tatama sa'yo, it, it may penetrate at ikaw yung masugatan. So you need to select kung ano ba yung appropriate para dun sa activity yung ginagawa mo. It should fit you properly. Baka naman kasi nalulaglag palagi sa'yo or like I mentioned, um, poor vision, kailangan mong gumamit ng eyeglass, eh baka hindi ka na makita. It may create another hazard. PPE should not create another hazard for you because it's meant to protect you. Okay? And it should provide unrestricted vision and movement. Kailangan nakakita ka pa rin. It should be durable and cleanable. Nalilinis mo siya. And it allow this allowed for unrestricted functioning of other PPE. So, pag nagsuot ka ng safety glass, let's say, hindi yung nai-impair yung iba pang other PPE na gamit mo. Baka kunyari, nagsusuot ka ng earmuff, ang sagabal dito sa gilid sa tenga mo. Tatanggalin mo tuloy ngayon yung safety glass. Diba? Tapos, ano, it can work with other PPE. We need to remember na you need to protect your eyes, but you need to be able to see as well. Hindi mo pinoprotektahan yung mata mo ng, uh, dahil pero hindi ka rin naman makakita. Kailangan balance eh. Kailangan nakakita ka pa rin para magawa mo yung trabaho mo. Kung, nagta kung magsusuot ka let's say ng safety glass, ang trabaho mo naman is indoor, hindi mo kailangan nung darker lens. Diba? Baka hindi ka na makakita. Ano? So you need to select accordingly kung ano yung nararapat sa activity. Um, kung hindi naman po ako masyado mabilis, I'll proceed. Pero kung masyado po ako mabilis, just let me know sa chat box. Nakikita ko naman. Okay. 
So let's go to head protection. Head protection, head injury can impair an employee for life or it can be fatal. Bakit? Dahil hindi yung utak natin. No? Kung isang tama lang yan, we don't know what's next. Andito yung parang core ng katawan natin. And kapag kaya na-injured, we don't know what's next, right? Ba, nasa hospital tayo, coma na tayo. And we want to avoid that. And simple lang naman yung pag-avoid. At least, no? For our, for our own self, habang ini-implement ng employer yung controls nila na kailangan natin sundin, suotin din natin kung ano yung narapat para sa atin. No? It is required when employees are in areas where there is a potential for injury to the head from falling objects. Nyari, nagtatrabaho ka, naglalakad ka, eh may, lift, ano, may nagtatrabaho sa isang building. No, sa scaffold, eh bigla nalaglag yung um, isang tool, let's say hammer, tumama sa ulo mo. Katulad nung kanina in example, split of a second, dahil nagsuot ka ng PPE, dahil nagsuot ka ng hard hat, at least uh, na-damage man yung hard hat mo, hindi na-damage ikaw. No? Kasi nga, meant to protect you as an individual. It also protects us from flying objects, fixed objects, impacts from other objects, protruding materials, and high voltage equipment kapag ka nagtatrabaho tayo in an overhead line no, involving live electricity. So protective helmets or hard hats should, in generally, resist penetration by objects. Trabaho is to protect our head. So it should be able to resist any impact or puncture na mare-receive from other objects. It should be able to absorb the shock of the blow and be water resistant and slow burning. And sh- it, it should also have a clear instruction explaining the proper adjustment and replacement. Okay. The, so the, the selection of hard hat must be appropriate to the job. May iba't ibang type ng hard hat ang nag exist no? And accordingly, kung ano yung gagawin mo activity, yun din yung kukunin mo hard hat. Ba naman kasi involving ng electric, live electricity, ay eh, kukuha ka ng conductive hard hat. Eh din, kinalaw mo na yung sarili mo makuryente, di ba? And it should also be, ano, fit sa taong gagamit. No? Ang hard hat naman, may adjustment naman siya. Which you can see dito, yung ratchet adjustment headband, ma-adjust mo siya. But you need to make sure na this is working. Kung hindi nyo siya ma-adjust, give it back. No? Wala na, hindi naman niya naka-charge sa inyo or anything. Hanggat maaga, kung alam niyo may problema, return it. And proper fit should allow sufficient clearance between the shell and suspension. Ito yan yung, ito yung shell natin, meron siya actually yung suspension doon. And yun yung nag absorb actually nung um, shock or blow from the top. So, do hard hats expire? Yan yung common question. Lagi na receive Actually, hindi naman siya per se nakalagay sa hard hat na, oy, ito yung expiration date. Hindi siya yung katulad ng pagkain. No? Na, ito yung expiration date. Ito yung best before ganat. But, manufacturers sometimes determine kung kailan mo siya pwedeng gamitin. Up at to what level, no? Up until when. So, Here, kung ito nakikita nyo, sa hard hat, merong, uh, sa ilalim, meron doon yung nakalagay ng production date. Isa siyang maliit lang na circle. Ma-identify nyo siya kung anong buwan at anong taon siya na manufacture. And from that, you need to count um, five years, depende kung yun yung sinabi ng manufacturer. You always need to depend sa manufacturer's manual. Hindi kayong gumawa nito. Silang gumawa nito. So sila yung nakakaalam kung up to what extent kaya ka protektahan nito okay then count five years five years kung sabi for the shell and sometimes may chain strap kasi or etong sa um, suspension 12 months so accordingly you replace it but normally naman kung hindi kung araw-araw niyo siyang ginagamit that's impo- impossible nga abot to ng five years no Mag- magkakaroon ng wear and tear to kaya it's always advisable na kung magre-replace kayo ng hard hats, hindi nakadepende kung kailan ito mag-expire, but rather, dun sa condition ng hard hat. 
'Di ba eh may crack na, nagwo-wear and tear na siya. Na-adjust niyo pa ba tong um ratchet uh, headband adjustment headband, no? Na-adjust niyo pa baka sira na 'to. Sabi ko nga may iba, bago. Sira naman, hindi niyo naman magamit. What's the point of keeping it? Return it back till na sira 'to. Otherwise it won't protect you. Baka itong suspension band is maluwag na rin. Eh, baka na ang maka-absorb na ng blow sa, sa ulo is yung mismong skull nyo na, di ba? Hindi na itong hard hat. So, wala rin yung protection. No? Kung ito ba yung na-expose na sa chemical or thermal ano, um, hazards, no? baka masyad na ano na to Yung iba kasi is nagtatrabaho ka, ano ka sa chemicals, which sometimes nakaka-penetrate doon sa material na usan gawa tong hard hat. And also, if it's impacted by objects or objects drop from 8 feet or higher. ba kasi paulit-ulit na ito nababagsan or nabagsakan na ito ng sobrang bigat. Siyempre, magkakaroon niya ng dent. So, you need to assess. No? Anyway, hard hat must be inspected daily. No? Visually expected and tingnan mo na before mo suotin okay pa ba to? Kung okay, you wear it, no. But you need to always check, hindi yung basta suot lang. Okay. So there are different types of hard hat or helmet. Uh, this is based on ANSI and ito rin makikita niyo to lagi sa uh, hard hat na meron kayo. Kung meron kayo, makikita niyo doon may instruction siya sa loob. Nakalagay doon ko anong klaseng hard hat ang meron kayo. So in terms of protection from impacts, may dalawang klase tayo. Meron tayong type 1 at type 2. Yung type 1, napoprotektahan tayo from the top only. Okay. Ito lang siya. And naka-specify siya doon sa loob mismo sa instruction. So here naka-mention na um, it provides limited protection from minor strikes on the top. Okay. Sa taas. Then, meron din tayong type 2. Ang type 2 naman, napaprotectan tayo sa taas at sa gilid. Okay. From the side. So, as you can see here, sa picture, meron siya yung parang foam dito sa gilid. May protection rin siya sa gilid. Okay. Um, pwede, rin na, pwede rin yung helmet is combined with other classes. Um, let's say, type 1 siya, protected siya sa taas, pero class C, class G, or class E. Depends, no? So, ang class C means it's conductive. Um, this has no electrical protection. This is just the normal hard hat. And, mag-isip kayo, eh, bakit pala, ano? Bakit gagamit tayo nito? Wala palang electrical protection. Siyempre, yung iba kasi, aminin natin, oh, gagamit tayo ng hard hat, to order tayo, nakatingga lang naman. Bakit? Kasi meant siya para sa mga visitors, sa mga, ano, Yung temporary lang naman sa site nyo. Baka may mga interns, hindi naman sila pupunta doon sa activity mismo kung asa nandun yung dangers, pero they'll be walking on the, ano, within the site. So they don't need ng sobrang taas na level of protection, which you can give naman doon sa mas na nangailangan. You can give them classy type of uh, helmet. Panandalian lang. Kung kunyari, nakaupo ka naman sa opisina, hindi ka may, may lumalabas. Take maybe in a year, 25% ka lumalabas. Put it there. Uh, use that. But again, it will depend on the assessment. No? So it's important na mag-conduct kayo ng risk assessment. Kung that activity requires different type of helmet than you sit. No. Wala naman nagpo-prohibit. Then class G and class E are both um, protected from electricity. And class G is protected up to 2,000 volts and class E are protected from 20,000. So that's why G means general and E electrical. So here sa hawak ko, nakastate dito is type 1 Class G and E. So, ibig sabihin, pwede siya sa class E, class G, tsaka type 1. Ito lang yung protection na meron siya. So, let's go to ear protection. So, pinoprotect natin yung ear from noise, which is a combination of sound level and duration of exposure. May iba't ibang... Uh, right, May iba't ibang allowable noise level para sa 8-hour working day sa bansa, iba't pang bansa. Let's say, for example, sa Philippines, ang nire-require sa ating yellow book is 90 dBA. 
While here in the UAE, ang inaalaw lang is up to 85 dBA. Same thing with the United States. While in UK, meron namang 87 dBA. So you need to assess kung ano yung pangailangan ng worker. No, pa masyad, baka yung nag-generate na noise upon measuring is 120 eh kung gagamit ka naman ng um, earmuff, no? say, eh ma-attenuate yung noise up to 30 dBA. Diba? Aabot pa rin siya ng 90 dBA. You can still work, no? Eight hours a day. That's fine. But we need to remember, more protection may not be better. Especially with air protection. Dahil, baka hindi niya na marinig yung mga katabi niya. In case of emergency, hindi na maririnig ni kuya or ni ate na nagtatrabaho. Ang sobrang um, attenuated na nung ginagamit nilang earmuff. No? And it creates another hazard. And you need to be alert. You need to use your five senses to know whether you're in danger. So, blocking that, same thing with the safety glasses kanina, sa protection, you need to be able to see kung ipoprotect mo pa rin. And same thing here. You need to be able to hear Okay. Para mapasabi mong protected ka pa rin talaga. So meron tayong common types of ear protection, which is ang earmuff, which it protects the entire ear by creating a perfect seal here. Okay, dito. So glasses, facial hair, long hair, such as chewing, may reduce the protective value of earmuffs. Kaya normally we encourage na sinashave yung muha. At yung buhok nakatali palagi para hindi siya sa gabal pag nagsuot ka ng earmuff. No? Yun lang. The, but downside is, syempre, um, here in the UAE, let's say, masyadong mainit. So, wearing that, it creates additional discomfort kasi mainit rin dito. Eh. Okay. So, why most of the time, ang nakikita natin kinagamit ng workers is yung earplug. No? Which, which is just ano, self-forming and works as a protection. One, properly inserted. Emphasizing on that properly kasi nakikita ko may iba na hindi siya na ikakabit na maayos kaya mayat maya nalalaglag. So, ba yung tamang pagsuot ng earplugs? Uh, according dito, okay, nakikita nyo naman sa side, mirror roll nyo dapat yung earplug. Okay? Para ma- lumiit siya, kumasa siya, i-roll nyo, parang umiikot lang ng, ano, para ka nagpipiga. Ikutin nyo lang. Tapos, hilahin nyo tong top ear dito, inipasok nyo. Okay. Pasok nyo hanggang uh, enough na nakocover na. And then, kusa na yung mag expand Okay. So, after noon, pagkapasok nyo, hawakan nyo lang siya. Count from, ano, count from 1 to 20 or 30 while waiting. Kasi kusa siya mag expand sa loob. Okay. And that's when we know na hindi na siya, ano, Uh, that's when we know how we put the earplugs properly. Para hindi siya nalalaglag palagi. Again, it's creating another hazard. May at maya yung nalalaglag, baka madulas ka na or di mo makita yung nangyayari. Okay. Ma'am, uh, in adi- hi ma'am, I'm sick. Sige po. Uh, in addition, no, uh, dapat talaga tama yung pagsusot ng earplug kasi uh, isa sa mga disadvantage niyan pinupush niya yung mga ano dumi sa tenga no nagko-cause ng additional hazard kaya minsan uh, protection mo siya from hearing uh, sa ears mo but somehow yung 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 bara no na pumapasok sa loob ng tenga siya rin nagiging cause ng damage ng hearing so, exactly yun, po po oh kaya hindi siya yung basta ganun lang otherwise pinapasok mo lang yung dumi doon di ba yung tamang paglagay. Parang po magpasok ka na maliit, kung kusa na siya mag-expand. Kinocover niya na. Okay. So let's go to respiratory. So respiratory protective equipment or RPE basically includes respirators which rely on filtering contaminants from workplace air. No. It can be a simple filtering face piece Simple lang siya, mga N95, no? or it can be an actual uh, powered-assisted respirators. Lalo na kung if we're working in confined space, meron yung mga uh, nagsusupply talaga ng breathable air. Okay. So, RPE protects us from dust, 
fogs, fumes, mist, gases, smoke, sprays, vapors, aerosols. No? All these things na po pinoprotektahan tayo ng RPE. Kaya napaka-importante na we need to ensure our RPE is clean and it fits us properly and it does not create any leakage. Okay. There are two types of respiratory protection, which is the air purifying respirators, which later they discuss natin, and then atmosphere supplying respirators. As mentioned earlier, it's important that respirators must fit tightly. It covers your nose and mouth. Kaya nga respirator. Ito kasi yung um, entry route. Uh, Ting nose and mouth. So, dapat na protektahan. And it also prevents leakage. Okay. So, air purifying respirators removes con contaminants from air using filters. Merang filters yan. If you can see. No? And it does not supply oxygen and cannot be used in an atmosphere that is oxygen deficient or IDLH. Ano ba yung IDLH? No. Tres, pa may dadagdag kayo. Uh, yung IDLH, uh, ikaw dedo, lagot hininga. <laughs> Sinagalit ko yan. Oh. Pero uh, immediately uh, dangerous to life and health. No? Uh, example niyan, kung magtatrabaho ka sa confined space at merong more than 100 ppm na H2S, uh, this can be considered as uh, IDLH. Oh, Ganun. Uh -huh. Right. So, ang pinaka-term na tatandaan natin is finifilter niya lang yung hangin. That's why it's air purifying. It's purifying the air. No? It does not give oxygen. So, meron tayo mga common uh, APR kung tawagin natin, which is here we have a filtering face piece, uh, face piece respirator or FFR. So, ito yung mga disposable respirators. And ito yung pinakakomo na ginamit natin back in pandemic, which is ang well-known dyan, is yung N95. No, it covers yung nose, yung mouth, and it filters out particles. No. So, ang FFR graded siya to three series. Meron tayong N, R, and P. So, N stands for non-resistant uh, non to oil. And R stands for resistant to oil and P stands for oil proof. So the difference between resistant and oil proof is yung resistant to oil, it allows ano lang, um, protection to oil-based aerosols up to one day for short period lang naman. Hindi siya, unlike ng oil proof, talagang it can protect you longer. No? But anyway, it's a disposable. It depends on your activity. And then, meron ding efficiency level na sinasabi. 95, 99, and 100. So, when we were using N95, it means it's non-resistant to oil. Hindi tayo napoprotectan sa oil-based aerosols. And it gives us 95% efficiency of um, protection. So, it only um, filters out 95%. So that's what we need to remember. And then it does not provide protection against gases or vapors. May certain level lang siya ng um, contaminants according to the size of the contaminants na pwedeng protecta. And it's uh, requiring fit testing. So we have half-piece respirator naman. Yung half-piece at yung common na nakikita natin, if you can see, it's a reusable, unlike nung FFR. Okay. And meron siyang cartridge na napapalitan, as you can see here. And it can be used to protect against gases, vapors, or particles. And it covers yung nose and mouth. So ito, ito siya. Okay. And adjustable naman siya. So that's the good thing. And fit testing is required. So nakikita niya normally sa mga nagpe-paint, ganun. Okay. But ang napaprotectan nyo is ito. And then we have the full face piece respirator, okay, which covers the entire face and it's reusable as well. So, ang pinagkaiba na half piece and full piece, syempre sa full piece, napaprotektahan din yung mata mo. No? Meron kasing mga gases or chemicals na irritants, pwedeng irritant sa mata. So, you need to protect your eyes as well, right? Or sa skin. Kaya sinusuot din yan. And 
fit testing is required rin. So, FFR, half piece and full face piece, kailangan ng fit testing. And all of this are tight fitting. It means talagang sakto siya sa uh, mukha nyo. Masikip siya. Hindi siya, wala siyang leak sa gilid. Okay. Kaya yung sa ultimo na lang doon sa N95, sinasakto natin siya dito para sealed rin siya dito. Walang gap sa may ilong natin. Banda. Unlike naman ng powered air purifying respirator or PAPR, it's loose fitting. In short, hindi na kailangan ng uh, fit test yan. Bakit? Hindi naman siya tight sa mukha mo eh. May ila ilalak niya lang talaga yung buong ulo mo. And hindi na kailangan pa ng fit test. Maluwag lang siya. Makay nga ka na maayos. Okay. And it's batter, ano, battery powered. So may, para siyang vacuum. Balik ka rin lang yung vacuum. Ako saan, may ano ka dito? Battery. Ba, ano, battery powered na blower. So hinihigop niya yung hangin. Okay. Na habang hinihigop niya may filter na siya. Then it pushes that filtered air. Doon sa mismong respirator mo. Para yun na yung hingay mo. Which is clean na yun, purified na yun. So we have a sample video which you can watch. Short ano lang naman to. Um, explanation of what is PAPR. For workplaces where respiratory protection is required, there's plenty of different options, including disposable respirators, reusable respirators, and products like this. This is what we call a powered air purifying respirator or PAPR for short. This one is the 3M VersaFlow TR300. There's a battery powered blower unit that filters particulates from the air and pushes the air up through a hole. So as you can see, meron siyang battery powered uh, filter or blower. Yun yung humihigop, no? And yung pagka na-purify na, nandito rin yung filter, iaakit nyo na yan dito. So nagsusup Ah, hindi siya nagsusupply ng hangin per se. Pero siya yung humigil. Uh, yung filtration niya is ongoing tuloy-tuloy. Inaangat na lang niya dun. Up to a headpiece. There's a variety of headpieces available. This one incorporates a certified hard hat and an impact resistant visor. Normally somebody wearing a respirator would need to be clean shaven for there to be an effective facial seal. A loose fitting headpiece like this on a PAPR unit is an effective respiratory solution for somebody with facial hair. The positive pressure generated by the PAPR unit is greater than the pressure outside the respirator. PAPR units like this are used extensively in industries where asbestos or silica may be present. They're used also in the medical industry and other high dust environments. The 3M VersaFlow TR300 PAPR unit. Contact your local safety equip branch for further information. If you'd like a safety crypt team member to come in. So yun yung pinagkaiba ng ano. Uh, let me just go back. Yun yung pinagkaiba ng PAPR. Dito, kahit na hindi ka nag-shave ng mukha mo, it's fine. It's not affected. Unlike here, since it needs to be tightly fitted sa mukha mo, you need to be ano, clean shaven. And here, you don't have to. Okay. That's the difference. For work. Okay. Then we also have the atmosphere supplying respirator, which provides clean, breathable air from contaminated source. Okay. And the co most common type is the self contained breathing apparatus, which is a CBA, and supplied air respirator or SAR. So the difference here is your SCBA, uh, yung Oxygen is contained siya sa isang cylinder which you're carrying. Unlike naman sa SAR, connected na siya sa compressor, which is siya na yung nagsusupply directa, tuloy-tuloy, ng um, breathable air, clean air na siya para magamit mo. So normally, may kita natin ito sa mga confined space activity or sa mga firefighters, but this has also been discussed back in our uh, training, which is RPE and fit testing which was conducted in uh, June. So you can just watch the trainings at Facebook or sa YouTube where we have explained it. So one also of the respiratory protection is face mask, which is well known for us. Although itong face mask na to, it's not considered as a respirator. Okay. 
However, it protects us against large droplets. Kaya ito ginagamit natin during pandemic kasi nga we're protecting ourselves from the droplets from other people. No, may sakit sila. It doesn't filter out smaller respirable particles. And it's loose fitting. So, ang mawaprotektahan lang nyo is itong part na to. But kung may mga smaller particles, respirable particles, pwede siya makapenetrate sa gilid. Tsaka, hindi siya yung tightly fitted. Sometimes, loose yung band ng mask. But we're still wearing it, right? Kasi it protects us from the droplets. And pag nabasa na siya, may tendency ba kayong mukha mo mabasa? When? Para lang siyang cloth. Okay? And it protects others also from respirable emissions. So kung ikaw, let's say, inuubo ka, kung nagsuot ka, hindi mo na napoprotect ka yung sarili mo, ba't pati yung ibang tao? So hand protection naman. Ano ba yung hand protection? From the term, it is used to protect workers from skin absorption of harmful substances. Dito sa ating kamay, severe cuts or lacerations, severe abrasions, punctures, chemical burns, and extreme temperatures. Most of the time, yung mga injury natin sa trabaho is either related sa kamay or sa paa. But most of the time sa kamay. Kasi may tendency na pagka hindi tayo comfortable sa ating uh, gloves na ginagamit, tinatanggal na lang natin siya. No? And may tendency rin kasi tanggalin yung mga guards na naka-install dun sa mga machine kung nagmamachining tayo. No? So maraming iba't ibang type ng safety gloves. Meron tayong cottons, latex, no? Kung kayo naman is allergic sa latex, meron tayong nitrile, meron tayong leather, meron pang ibang chemical resistant or electrically um, electrical proof, fireproof na safety gloves. Okay. But what's important here is you need to identify what does your activity requires. No. Kung kayo ba is magtatrabaho involving chemicals which can cause chemical burns, then gumamit kayo ng chemical resistant gloves. Kung allergic naman kayo sa latex, syempre hindi kayo gamit ng latex, gagamit kayo ng nitrile. Whatever suits your activity, you need to use that specific safety gloves and you will be able to find up to what level of protection that safety gloves can offer doon sa manufacturer's manual. So it's always important that you need to check the manufacturer's manual. Okay. But remember, sa safety gloves, meron kasing mga certain activities which may create additional hazards. Let's say, for example, nag-grinding kayo, nagmamachining kayo, let's say, na magsusuot kayo ng cotton gloves. No? Hindi, ina, hindi ina-advise na magsuot ka ng cotton gloves kasi it can cause entanglement. And the reason why is yung mga machines na yun, normally meron na yung guards na nakalagay, naka-install na yan. And sometimes it's hard to um, remove those guards kasi talagang may, ano na siya, parmi, installed na siya along with that. So kung magsusuot pa kayo ng gloves, para mag-create siya ng additional hazard. Ma-entangle yung gloves mo doon, maipit pa yung kamay mo, daliri mo. So you need to check kung appropriate pa rin ba. As mentioned, Last line of defense natin, ang um, PPE. What we need to know is kung ano yung tamang donning and doffing. So by donning, ano yung tamang pagsuot? At by doffing, ano yung tamang pagtanggal? So, syempre, ang importante is kung tatanggalin mo na siya, uh, contaminated na yung kamay mo eh. So, unay mo muna tanggalin yung um, gloves mo by touching dun sa surface mismo hindi mo ipapasok dito kasi otherwise na-contaminate mo na yung kamay mo. To touch that, with both hands, grasp the outside. Tanggalin mo siya, hilahin mo siya, at balik ta rin mo. Okay. It's always best practice to balik, to turn it backwards kasi yun yung hindi contaminated. Okay. Then once na na balik ta, natanggal mo na siya, yun na, wala ka ng gloves sa kabila, ipasok mo na to dito. Then, same thing. Balik ta rin mo hanggang mag- Uh, crumble na siya ng parang bola.
So foot protection, it's the same thing with hands, but the, here it is used to protect the feet from impact of heavy objects, spills and flashes, electrical hazards, slips and extreme temperatures. The most common protection in hanap natin from safety shoes are yung from ano, anti-slip. Okay, anti at least steel toed it. Bakit? Para kami bumagsak na mga objects. Pag tumama siya sa paa, hindi ganong aggravating. As you can see here, mas malas hindi ka rin nadudulas. But sometimes, we may be required to work on wet environment or hindi natin napapansin. Uh, yung paligid natin is, ano na siya, surrounded by moisture or, or water. So the common types of safety shoes are impact resistant to and or in step. Ito yung mga gawa sa steel or composite. Meron rin tayong heat resistant soles, sure metal shanks, metatarsals. Ito na yung mga makakapal, no. And meron tayong mga chemical resistant and electrically conductive or non-conductive safety shoes. So you need to select according sa activity ng gagawin mo. We also have skin and body protection, which is ito na yung habuan ng katawan natin. So, even though it's a cloth, it provides protection naman from those parts of the body exposed to possible injuries. No. Not just injuries, maybe ano, um, illness din, such as intense heat. No. May mga damit kasi na it provides cooling. So, at least during, when working under the heat, hindi, there's ano, lesser possibility of you getting exhausted no? or magkala ng heat cramps other heat, heat illness related. Even from cuts, hazardous chemicals, kung magkaroon ng splash, hindi tatanga sa balat nyo, bato sa pipi nyo. Splashes from hot metals, contact with potentially infectious materials like blood, radiation, and impacts from tools, machinery, materials. Okay. So, may iba't ibang types tayo ng body protection, such as yung coveralls, ito yung pinaka-common sa industrial activity. Ito yung nakikita natin. Mayroon tayong laboratory coats sa mga taong nagkatrabaho sa labs, yung sa research, they need something to protect them whenever they're dealing with chemicals or other biological substances. Mayroon ding full body suit na nakikita natin, especially sa mga health sector to protect them from biological hazards. No, contacting that or inhaling that. Then we have surgical gowns. The mga nakikita rin natin yan sa uh, health sector. Jackets and vests. Uh, most of the time, even though it does not give us the protection as natulad ng sa coverall, but it gives ano, protection in a sense na nakikita tayo ng mga workers. Give signals na, oy, andito ako. Okay, I'm working. Pero mayroon mga vests rin naman talaga na makakapal. And we have aprons. Okay. So when we select the body, the PPE for the body, meron ding mga paper-like fiber. Ito yung ginagamit para sa protection against dust and splashes. Normally disposable ito. Okay. And yun yung nakikita natin nga yung uh, suit kanina na ginagamit sa uh, full uh, medical sector or outside yan, full body suit. Then meron rin tayong treated wool and cotton which is fire resistant, dust abrasions, and rough irritating surfaces. It protects you from that. Okay. It's a bit um, heavier but it gives you enough protection. Then we also have duck, which is closely woven cotton fabric that protects against cuts and bruises when handling heavy, sharp, or rough materials, which is used if you're dealing more with um, sharp objects, heavy objects. And we have leather used to protect against dry heat and flames. And rubber, rubberized fabrics, neoprene, and plastic which protects against certain chemicals and physical hazards. So what's important is knowing the activity that you'll be doing. 
Um, good, um, we need to think na itong body protection na to, susuotin to ng buong tao. So, we need to make sure na protected yung tao at the same time, hindi siya nabibigatan. Okay? pa kasi nagtatrabaho yung tao, let's say, sa sobrang init na lugar, baka nag-aggravate nag, ano, nag pa siya doon sa body heat na na-experience ng tao. So, if there's a possibility na baka mag, mahilo yung tao, loss of consciousness, so you need to consider those things. And also, lastly, we have the fall protection. Sometimes we uh, this is required when there's a risk of falling at height of six feet or two meters or greater when area is not guarded or protected by other fall protection. But it doesn't mean that just because may safety net or may scaffold, hindi ka na magsusuot ng um, safety harness. Because there's a possibility na even yun mag-collapse. Okay? So, so we need to... Uh, make sure or assess the activity whether how can we use that harness and natin siya pwedeng i-anchor and work, work at any height in area lifts, powered platforms and similar equipment. So this includes safety belts, lifelines and lanyards. So we will, this has been discussed dun sa ating training before which is rigging and lifting safety and this will also be discussed in further trainings. So, if you remember, merong na-post doon sa Facebook page natin kung ano ba yung tamang pagtanggal ng PPE. Generally speaking, walang standard kung ano ba yung dapat mong unahin kung magtatanggal ka. But you need to make sure lang na kung naprotekta mo na yung sarili mo, syempre. So, dapat pati sa pagtanggal, hindi ka rin naman ma, ano, ma-infect or ma- hindi mo rin mako, hindi ka makokontaminate. Kaya ka nga nag-protect, ano, kaya ka nasuot ng PPE para maprotect ang sarili. Tapos sa pagtanggal mo, do ka pa pala makokontaminate. So, ang CDC, nag-post sila ng, um, sa kanila, sa med health, relate, health sector, ng tamang pagsuot, pagtanggal ng PPE. So, normally, inuuna yung gown para buong katawan ma-hover, then tsaka susuotin yung respirator. Okay. Then afterwards, susuotin yung goggles or face shield para cover na yung mukha. And last na yung gloves. Okay. Then yung gloves, kailangan overlapping siya dun sa um, body suit na suot mo. Para uh, hindi makapasok yung mga, uh, kung nagdi-deal ka sa liquids, chemicals, or other particles. And then when you will remove it, sometimes inuuna yung gloves then sunod na yung goggles, face shield, gown, kahuli-hulihan yung respirator. Kasi you're preventing uh, particles entering your nose and mouth. Then immediately, magugas ka ng kamay. That's the most important. No? Kung buong katawan, sa tingin mo, kailangan mo hugas ang buong katawan mo, maligo ka. But kung enough na yung maghugas ka ng kamay, you just wash your hands. But the most important part is once you remove your PPE, contaminated PPE, you need to make sure na um, direct ang maghugas ka na agad. Wash yourself. Sometimes mauna rin yung gloves. No? May ibang ganun. But again, there's no specific standard kung ano yung dapat mong uunahin. So how do we select suitable PPE? Okay. Prior to that, we need to understand ano ba yung suitable. Kanina nga, sa batas, paulit-ulit sinasabi, eh, we need to, uh, employer must provide suitable PPE sa workers, etc. So, what does suitable mean? Okay. So, suitable means right or appropriate for a particular person, purpose, or situation. So, applying that to safety, we need to ensure na yung PPE na gagamitin or ipoprovide, eh, patama doon para sa tao. Baka naman masyadong maliit si ate or si kuya. Tapos ibibigay niyang PPE is large size, di ba? Di hindi rin naprotektahan. So, you need to know yung tao mismo. Ano ba yung body structure niya? Ano ba yung pangailangan niya? Baka ano siya, malabo yung paningin niya, nahihirapan siya humang, huminga. So, those things you need to consider. The condition of the person. 
physically and medically. Need to also know the purpose. Anong activity ba yung gagawin? Will it involve live electricity? Will it involve um, exposure to chemicals? Involving machine activity where there will be hazards of flying particles? Those things you need to assess. Kung ano ba yung, kung para sa ba gamitin yung PPE na yun. Okay. And ano yung situation? Okay. Apa, hindi lang focus dun sa activity mismo. But kung ano rin yung nasa paligid. Okay. There's a possibility na nakansuot ka lang ng normal na shoes, safety shoes. Eh meron dun yung nag, uh, activity ko sa nag-washing sila ng mga equipment. na may containing na merong containing na oil, degreasers, etc. Baka madulas ka doon sa part na 'yon, 'di ba? So you need to consider yung nearby activities din para protected ka rin. Lastly, you need to remember na PPE is personal. Ang PPE pinoprotektahan is ikaw. Hindi yung hindi yung ibang tao. Okay? So that's why we to make sure na ang PPE ang ko para sa atin. Hindi ang PPE hindi naman yan one size fits all eh. Okay? Meron nagre-record. Okay. So you need to understand na yung PPE na yon, ang ko siya para sa worker na yon dahil iba yung pangangailangan ng worker na yon. At iba rin yung pangangailangan ng iba. Okay. So we need to uh, always check Kung yung bang PPE na meron tayo is enough para sa pangangailangan natin. Okay. Siyempre, may iba na kasi yung tao na pinapahiram yung PPE. Pangangailangan, urgent, kailangan na, mag-work na tayo. So, sasabihin ng isa, o oh, sige, 15 minutes na naman magtatrabaho, pahiram ko na sa'yo. Okay, sige, ganan. So, normally, ako nyari, eto, sa gantong um, uh, respirator, papagagawin mo, pahiram mo nalang sa kabila. Okay. So, good thing, adjustable naman siya. So, dapat si, yung hihiram na yun, ma-adjust niya according sa pangangailangan niya. ba? Diba? But well, we need to always check na, oh, malinis naman to. Wala namang mga uh, dumi dito. And yung filter, hindi rin siya madumi. Otherwise, palitan mo, napapalitan naman siya. ba? Diba? So, we need to always make sure na tama yung sinusuot natin PPE. So first, you need to identify, as mentioned, sino ba yung may expose? Saan ba sila may expose? Ano-ano ba yung mga hazards na yun? Gano'n ba sila katagal may expose? Gano'n ba katagal yung pagtrabaho nila? Okay. Let's say, nagtatrabaho ka sa maingay na lugar, gano'n ka ba katagal magtatrabaho doon para hindi ka magsuot ng um, ear protection? And how much are they, are they exposed to? Okay. You need to know all those things. Simple lang naman siya. Siyempre, we need to know ano-ano ba yung mga hazards na present doon sa activity na yun. No. Can either be mechanical hazards, physical hazards, biological hazards, or chemical hazards. That's why when we select PPE, it's important to choose products which are suitable. Doon sa activity, upon Uh, conducting risk assessment and ano ba yung requirement ng standard? So it goes hand in hand. We also need to choose equipment that suits the user. As mentioned, kung ano ba yung physical and uh, medical condition ng tao. If more than one item of PPE will be worn at the same time, dapat pwede mo siyang pagsabayin. Ang susunod ka ng face shield tapos nakasuot ka ng pagkakapal kapal na respirator. Then, hindi rin siya protektahan yung ano mo, mukha mo, di ba? Hindi nag-work together. So, dapat, yung parehas na pipi na gagamitin mo, ang sa isa't isa. And, ikaw na nagpo-provide ng PPE, si employer, dapat i-ensure niya na na-instruct niya yung tao na gagamit at itetrain din paano gamitin. Habi nga kanina, yung simple yung earplug, di ba? Basta-basta nalang pinapasok. Pero may may nalalagnag. So, hindi rin siya nakaprotect dun sa tao. Dapat alam ng tao, paano ba yung tamang paglagay? Para magamit nyo na maayos. Ano maprotectan talaga siya? At lastly, kailangan maintindihan nila. Bakit ba kailangan yung PPE? 
kailan siya kailangan at ano yung limitations niya. Kailangan malaman nila na ang PPE is last line of defense. Kahulihan niya. Upon Kahulihan. doing everything. Okay, may nakaano ho ata. Mute. Ay, unmute. Pakimute na lang po yung mic. Okay, thank you po. Okay. So, ang pinaka-bottom line ng lahat ng to is yung risk assessment. As a safety practitioner, this is the one of the most powerful tool na magagamit natin. Risk assessment. You need to know how to conduct risk assessment because this will give you everything. It will identify the hazards present on that activity. You know? Even dun sa nearby activities, everything. What does the regulatory uh, reg regulators or standards require you to wear according dun sa ginagawa mo? And other controls. No? Kasi PPE will only be able to protect you. It can never protect others. Kung naprotektan mo sarili mo, good. Pero paano yung iba na hindi nakapagsuot ng PPE or pumali yung PPE nila? Paano sila maproprotektan, di ba? Kaya tayo may hierarchy of controls. No? Which risk assessment identifies that. Ano ba yung controls na kailangan doon? Kaya yung, uh, I'm encouraging everyone, yung mga hindi naka-attend ng risk assessment training namin back in January, it's recorded. You can check it on YouTube and Facebook. You can watch it. Because it's important for us to know how do we conduct this assessment? Ano yung mga kailangan i-consider? And when we put controls there, we just don't mention na PPE, yun yung kailangan. We need to specify anong PPE yung pangailangan. No? Dahil nire-relay natin yun dun sa tao and as well as sa employer. Dahil yung risk assessment, signed naman yun ng ating employer. Or at least kung sino man yung highest level. That's acknowledging na yes, we will implement this. Okay. That's why yung responsibilities ng employer is to perform hazard assessment, risk assessment. Number one, they need to perform risk assessment because that's the only way you will know ano yung kakailanganin mo. Then they need to provide appropriate PPE. As mentioned nga kanina dun sa uh, legal requirements, di ba? Employer magpo-provide ng PPE free of charge. They also need to train employees paano gumamit ng PPE. Otherwise, it's useless. They will not know. No? Nagsayang ka ng pera. Kaya kailangan, alam nila paano gamitin. And hindi lang paano gamitin. Napaka-importante na kailangan nila paano nila i-maintain or palitan yung, let's say, PPE, yung filters, etc. Kasi, yung PP, um, may added cost din kasi siya. Kung bigay ka, issue ka ng issue ng PP, eh, si worker naman, wala naman siyang pake. Hindi naman siya, hindi niya alam paano i-maintain. Hinahayaan niya lang mas hira. Diba? Like, let, yung earplug, let's say, ninawala niya nang winawala or yung earmuff, mayat maya niya, ano, kusan saan nilalagay. So, ikaw na employer, syempre, need, you need to also make your employees understand, your workers understand, na kailangan nilang i-maintain yung PPE. And, ano, in a good condition. Kasi yung PP naman, di naman, may iba dyan na it's meant to protect you for longer periods. No? Hindi yung may may mo siya nire-replace. It's reusable. And you need to review, update, or evaluate PPE program. Ang PPE program required siya sa Pilipinas ng DO-198. Okay. Takes in section 12. I remember. I have to check. So, kailangan i-review natin yun. And, uh, kung akma pa rin ba yung PPE yung ginagamit. Baka kasi may bagong equipment na. May bagong activity na. Okay. Kung tama pa rin ba yun. Or baka karamihan na ng workers na is mga uh, new workers na. No? Or yung mga karamihan ng tao matatanda na. Siyempre, you need to check kung akma pa rin ba yung ginagamit nila mga safety glasses, etc. All those things you need to check. Okay. And part rin naman yan ng risk assessment. Kung annually or regularly ninyo nire-review yung risk assessment nyo. Ikaw naman as employee or si worker, kailangan mo rin maintindihan na you need to properly wear the PPE. 
Hindi mo lang yung pinapabayaan. Binigay sa'yo yung PP, in-issue sa'yo. Walang suotin rin yan na maayos. ba? Diba? And you need to attend PPE training. Kung hindi ka marunong, paano gamitin yung PPE? Umatend ka ng training na ibibigay. Hindi lang basta bigay sa employer. Dapat ikaw mismo gumawa ka ng effort to know and understand kung ano yung tamang paraan ng pagsuot ng PPE. Important, you need to care for, clean, and maintain PPE. Iba kasi mga employees or workers, ginagawa, kuwala sila ng kuha, tapos yung pala tinatago na nila. No? And then, hihingi na naman sila kay employer, eh nasira si si PPE, ganun-ganun. No? At sabihin naman ni employer, eh kakabigay ko lang sa'yo. O syempre, ikaw, tatakutin mo. Hindi, according dito, eh, right po yung PPE. Hindi lang basta, eh, right mo, right mo yun as a worker to have PPE. Pero that doesn't mean that you, ha- you have to abuse, no? Na parang may at maya kang hihingi. You need to take care of the equipment that you're using. Lastly, you need to inform your supervisor kung kailangan ng i-replace or may sira yung PPE na ginagamit mo. It's always important. Kahit bago pa siya, sometimes hindi akma sa'yo, hindi akma sa katawan mo, sira na siya, etc. Nang kailangan mo sabihan si supervisor, eh, sorry po, hindi pwede to. Eh, sira kasi to, hindi ko ma-adjust yung helmet, nalalaglag po. Inform mo immediately. Okay. Kasi yung simpleng action lang na yun, it will protect you for longer time. Okay. Siguro, I'm sick. In addition, no, ako ang pinagawag. Uh, doon din po mapasok yung halaga nung ano, na, na i-communicate sa mga employee yung OSH policy as well as uh, yung uh, establish o na meron silang dinevelop na procedure uh, on the use of PPE. Oo, para yung abuse, uh, misuse na ginagawa ng employee. No? Uh, kasi uh, kung ang employer nagawa niya na yung part niya, Diba na mag ano mag issue magbigay ng mga suitable PP pero si employee naman eh hindi naman niya inaano yung tinatawag na duty of care eh talagang ano siguro doon na pumapasok yung role ng safety no to enforce right. na kung ano yung dapat na ipataw so, mm-hmm. thank you yun lang po adlang po thank you po kaya importante na regular nating ina-update yung PPE program. Nakapaloob rin kasi yan dyan eh. Hindi, hindi lang kung ano yung PPE yung ibibigay mo, but as well as yung um, responsibilities ng both parties. No? So that's why it's important na we always need to assess kung may at maya naman yung cases na um, nagkakaroon ng sira, eh, pag, as, ano, pag-aralan, bakit, bakit, Bakit laging nasisiraan ng pipi? Ba't may at maya humihingi? Ano ba yung reason? No? Baka Naka naman kaya... Nakamitin siya naman. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> no? Or baka naman hindi akma yung gamit mo, yung initial PPE. Eh kaya kami nasisiraan eh. Eh kasi, in limited lang yung protection binibigay no? ng PPE na yun against dun sa activity na yun. That's why we need to go back again to the risk assessment. Is it enough? No. Is it enough to protect you from the residual risk? No. It's a continuous process, but that's how you protect your people. Okay. And lastly, we need to take care of our PPE. Paano ba natin yan inaalagaan? So, workers must use PPE properly. Hindi yan dapat inaayos mo or nire-repair. Okay. Let's say yung... Um, sorry. yung hand gloves mo, butas-butas, nalalagyan mo pa ng tape or tatahiin mo kung cloth siya, okay pa siya. Diba? So, you need to inform your supervisor. Hindi ikaw yung magde-decide na, ay, pwede pa to. Sabihin mo si, it's your right naman as a worker. Inform mo si supervisor na, okay, sira yung PPE ko. Para at least alam ni supervisor and let them decide, okay. And always check PPE for damage before and after use. Daily, it's a good practice to uh, conduct visual inspection. Ano ba? May damage pa siya? Ganun. Anyway, in-inspect rin yan tayo mga safety practitioner, di ba? And palagi natin yan in-emphasize tuwing TBT sa mga workers. Check 
your PPEs. So, na naman nila eh. By the time nakokontakt sila ng TB. And you need to clean the PPE before storing. It's a mandatory. It's a proper house uh, keeping um, process. Li- make sure na malinis yung PPE. No? Para hindi naman, na, baka naipo na yung dumi, eh di inakontaminate rin yung sarili mo. And safety signs can be useful reminder. So, again, administrative control ang paglalagay ng safety sign. So, it's a good reminder na alam ng mga tao na okay sa area ang to. Um, PPE is mandatory. And make note of any changes in equipments, materials, or methods. As mentioned earlier, baka may mga pagbabago na sa processes, sa mga equipment na nandun, sa activities, all those things. You need to take note of that and assess no, kung kakailanganin bang ng additional or bagong PPE, change in the PPE program. And properly store PPE and avoid conditions that could damage them. So, employers and workers should use the right replacement. Okay? Kung gagamit, kung nasira ang kalat say, ng filters, papalitan mo yung filters, dapat yung filters na gagamitin mo up pa dun sa mask na ginagamit mo. Kung kailangan mo na magpalit ng gloves or safety glasses, akma dun sa activity na gagamitin mo rin. Okay? And you need to ensure na yung PPE replacement, available siya. May stock ka. Kasi nga, yung sinasabi natin kanina sa helmet na five years yung expiry, etc. Eh yun naman, kung di mo yung nagagamit, honestly speaking. Pero kung ikaw met, may ka lumalabas, met, may mong ginagamit, makapansin mo, may wear and tear na yung yung helmet mo no? and other PPE din, types of PPE. Kaya pagka ganun na pansin mo na, eh, hindi na siya napoprotectan, palitan mo na agad. Okay. Then have a supply of appropriate disposable suits. So sometimes it's good na magkaroon ka rin ng mga disposable PPEs such as mask, gloves, or yung uh, body suit para kung do sa activity na yun, mas appropriate na one-time use lang, one-time lang ng activity. So, tiyan mo na lang yun, it will protect you. Hindi mo, hindi mo na rin kailangan mag-maintain. Or, or pagka may visitors ka, ibigay mo na lang din. Okay. So, before we end, um, I just have short quiz. So, I'm encouraging everyone to please go to this link, join myquiz.com. So, once you enter that, meron kayo makikita ang game code. Enter the game code. So, just enter the 323252. So, I I will post the link sa ating ano. Oops, sorry. Okay, I will post the link on the chat box. But uh, before we end, I just want you to remember, if you want your PPE to take care of you, you need to take care of your PPE. Para lang din yung tao. Um, give and take. Kailangan alagaan natin yung isa't isa. So, let's...